Good evening. We bring you the latest in world of sports. I'm Paolo De Rosario. We bring you the conversations you want to hear from your favorite icons and athletes. I'm Alexis Tintai in tonight's Game Plan. We'll get to know four more of our UAAP Season 84 correspondents reporting from the sidelines. We'll also take a peek at the gritty PBA Governor's Cup semis featuring Inebra versus Enlex and Magnolia versus Meralco. And we'll get some stories from the court side of the Premier Volleyball League 2022 Open Conference quarterfinals. Buckle up, sports fans. Let's get in the game. Now let's take a look at today's results for day two of UAAP men's basketball. Jerome Lastimosa was perfect from the field as he led Adamson to a 16-point win against UE. Then Tyler Theo caught fire, scoring 17 points in the third quarter as the Eagles defeat the Tamarouts. Mark Nonoy also made his first appearance for LaSalle as the Archers defeated the NU Bulldogs. And currently, the UP Fighting Maroons are battling the USC Growling Tigers as both teams look for their first win of the season. And as the season continues to progress in UAAP men's basketball, it's time for us to get to know more of our correspondents reporting for our beloved fans and athletes. Tonight, we are joined by Lexi Rodriguez, EJ Amante, Jack Makaset, and Zandi Baharias. All right, guys, welcome to the show. Uh, don't be shy, you can laugh. <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, the four of you here, just so all our viewers know, uh, are not on the broadcast yet for the UAP basketball, men's basketball tournament. And we're going to see you, the four of you, uh, later on in the season. So for those wondering, you can catch them there. I want to start off first with Jack because, uh, again, only guy here. So I got to start off with you. Siempre, you're coming into this one as a former athlete. A lot of people want to stay in sports industry after yeah. getting a taste of that action. Yeah. Uh, what made you choose going into a program like this and what do you hope it could lead to? Well, this is a new opportunity for me, most especially during the two-year hiatus of the pandemic. There were no tournaments, there were no chances of playing outside with other people. So. Uh, I would like to see this as an opportunity for me to hone my skills, most especially I'm a comm student, and I would also want to challenge myself uh, in a way. Can I just point out, the, high, the pictures that we're showing of Jack right now are him playing for LaSalle, pero he moved on to the blue side. Eh. Oh, true blue pow. Okay, so let's move on to someone else, Alexis. <laughs> Okay, let's move on to EJ. Because si EJ is so interesting ng background niya kasi she wants to be a lawyer someday. Mm -hmm. Pero her father taught her how to play golf as well as watch F1 and basketball. <laughs> and alam mo, gusto ko tanongin eh, um, are you into sports law if ever in the future <laughs> dahil sa mga interests mo? Um, actually, I'm really interested in being a lawyer for sports injuries. But, exactly. But I really want to become a criminal lawyer someday. That's no, no, that's that is actually, intense, Paul. That is actually more intense than I, I expected as an answer. But EJ, when you look at uh, you came, you came in, and the well, the bio here says that you wanted to improve your communication skills right now, and just how the storytelling in your mind fit into what you want to do. Um, well, I really want to become a courtside reporter because I really want to understand people, get to know them, ask the right questions, and this is the best opportunity for me to improve my skills and also discover new experiences which I can use um, in my future. Yeah, no, that that makes a lot of sense. Alam mo tamang tama yun yung laging sagot ng courtside reporter kasi yun talaga yung job namin. It's to tell the stories. It's it's not another job for any other kind of media. Yeah. Kasi, kumbaga yung sa amin talaga, lalabas mo yung stories ng buhay ng players and you get to do it inside, outside the court and bring it to the audience. I agree. And of course, uh, it, we're actually starting the shift right now. Siyempre, we're moving on from the name courtside reports and moving on to correspondent. Kasi grabe, they're going to be doing a lot more yes. and you all being here actually is a part of that. And uh, Zandi, when you when we were talking a bit a while ago and you were talking about how 
sports and your family actually come together in the sense that you grew up with them watching and you listening? <laughs> How does it feel na at the moment, siguro moving forward, your family will still be watching and you won't just be listening in. You're, they're going to be listening to you instead. I know, it's crazy. I think um, this is one of the reasons also why I wanted to join the UAAP was because my grandfather is such a big sports fan. Mm -hmm. And so just the feeling of being able to tell those stories to my grandfather, I think is something that I'm very looking forward to doing. Yeah. So, it's a family thing, it really yeah. exists. Uh, you know what, it's, it's heartwarming. Yeah. I mean, to know when a person comes from a sports family, because hindi lang yun individual passionate, it's a group passion and it's something that you grow up with. Yeah. So it's very comforting for a lot of the audience to know na, ah, oh, yung taong to lumaki siya sa sports. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree. And, uh, you know, let's move on now to uh, our next correspondent, si Lexi Rodriguez. And, uh, I, I, when I was reading through the, the bio, because it's fashion and sports, they're yes. trying to combine it. Uh, you want to grow up to be a writer uh, mm -hmm. for fashion, but siempre you want to put in sports as well. How, how does that all work out in your head? I mean, if you look at it in a, like two different ways, it's like two different two different worlds, But mm -hmm. then I want to know like the dynamics on how athletes play, like their discipline, and I think that it's the same with like people in the fashion industry. You know, like. It's their typical day-to-day -day life. It's different, talaga, and they, you experience different things every day. And I think that's what I want to also experience in the sports industry as a correspondent. Mm -hmm. Yes, and given her likes for fashion, ang ganda ng dress mo. Thank you so much. Di ta na wento talaga. Okay, no, 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 yes. no. That, that makes a lot of sense, though, <laughs> Lexi. And I also want to ask Jack. Um, Shempre, you came from the athlete side, so of course you're gonna have a deeper understanding as to what athletes go through with regards to training. Paano mo yun mailalagay as a correspondent? How are you gonna deliver the message, the the support that they want from the fans, and also, Shempre, the guidance that they get from their coaches? How are you gonna share all that? First of all, I'm gonna have to turn on my athlete. Yeah. Athlete mode, yes. so I'll be able to empathize, uh, get uh, in the, the the feel of how they feel during the game, and so that will be that's somewhat easier for me in order to interpret and to share with the fans how they're feeling and how uh, what they would wanna express during the game and. As I would give it to the fans. You know, that's interesting because, siempre, that whole athlete mentality, it, it, it does matter. It gives you a different perspective. Uh, me personally, I've, I've seen a bit of that because, well, I grew up around the coach. But when you have uh, that mentality, I'm sure that's going to help you out. Uh, Lexi, you talked about putting your worlds together right now. And what, what excites you the most of actually approaching the sports world in a way that I'm 100% sure you probably did not approach it before. I know, but honestly, like everything, just mm -hmm. everything, like going into the court, like waiting who's going to win, I think that's what I'm just really excited about. Mm -hmm. And you know, just anticipation waiting, yeah. I think uh, it's it's something you can't really quantify in and, and mm -hmm. all of that. Um, I want to move on to Zandi. When you talk about your family, getting getting used to the shampoo, you're going to make... Uh, you're gonna find different bonds there and discover how teams are also families and how they all work out, Chempre. And do you do you feel that uh, it would be a big part in your understanding and your connection with your family once you understand how the teams function as fa families as well? Oh, definitely. I, I believe that that's the very nature of sports as well. You know what really got me into it for the UAAP, for instance. You know. It's, just, it's something communal that yeah. everyone shares, right? And so I think that understanding that dynamic that sport teams have and bringing it into the family, I feel like it's going to be a whole different conversation over the dinner table. I, I <laughs> agree. I agree. And Alexis, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Because a while ago, I asked the four of you if you have any questions for her because she actually is a courtside reporter in general. So I want to ask the future lawyer uh, to, to try and grill this person Grab right here. Me. And, you know, what... What do you? What type of knowledge do you want to extract from her at the moment? The, the knowledge I really want to learn is how do you handle the pressure? Uh -huh. Because in a game, a lot of things are happening at the same time. How do you make sure that your report um, it consists of everything that's important? You know what they think that law and sports would be like two different worlds. Pero the the one thing that's common about them is that 
you have to handle the pressure. Of course, mm -hmm. if you have to handle a client, you have to handle a case. You you walk straight to the court with your head up high. And pareho lang yon. Korte sa basketball man o korte sa gobyerno. Talagang kailangan nandun yung confidence mo. You have to believe in yourself because you know that you are gonna deliver the right message. I, I'm okay. I'm impressed at her answer. If I'm impressed at your question. <laughs> uh, yeah. So knowing knowing all of that, uh, I want. Uh, how about you? Do you have any questions for Alexis over here? Before or uh, we move on to talking about you, you more? I feel like it's a really good question. I don't know I'm going to up that bar, but I, I want to ask a bit of technicalities. How difficult is it it's to, to have something? I, I believe you, you're hearing something while you're... Yeah, the, they, they yeah. hear us. They hear yeah. the commentators. Yeah, yeah. yeah but then Shempre, that's a big part of that storytelling. I talking huh? for two hours. Yeah. It's, it's no, but then, thing, no, but then um, it's something that I always tell the panel and the prod crew that an earpiece, par, it may seem like a simple instrument, but it's, it's the tool that makes you listen to your panel. And when you're a correspondent, it's not a one-person job. You have to listen to what they got to say and you have to add to it. Um, a correspondent doesn't just show face. Um, to the audience, pero kailangan talagang makonect mo kung ano yung nangyayari in-game and also um, outside the game. You have to explain to everyone what's happening. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this was ac an accidental free workshop for all of our correspondents <laughs> with uh, Alexis Tinsay. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're excited to have the four of them here. We're excited to see them on the, on the court uh, sooner rather than later. And hopefully, we get to hear a lot more from them soon. Uh, that is EJ Amante, Jack Makasayet, Alexi Rodriguez, and Zandi Baharias, uh, your correspondents here for UAP Season 84. Woo! Exciting. Okay. Your, your line. There. <laughs> After the break. <laughs> We're on to the PBA Governor's Cup semis games for both series tomorrow. Who are the top players to watch and who will go to the finals? All that more, so stay tuned. You're watching the game. watching the game. Games for both Hinebra and Enlex, uh, or rather Hinebra versus Enlex and Maralco versus Magnolia will be underway tomorrow. The Jin Kings are 2-1 and one over the Road Warriors, while the Bolts lead their series two games to one over the Magnolia Hot Shots. Now for the meantime, let's hear from our analysts. Diego Dario to understand deeper what it takes for these teams to assure a trip to the finals. Diego, welcome back to the show. Uh, always great having you here and uh, congratulations again on being part of the UAP broadcast. And, um, you know, again, hearing your voice always uh, makes us all happy here. But Alexis, you get us going talking about the PBA. Alam mo, simulan na natin sa Hinebra and Enlex. Okay. Jegs, mm -hmm. we have a really stark legend matchup. Can you talk about Brownlee and Clark? Mm. Well, first of all, thank you, Alexis <laughs> and, and Pao for having me um, tonight for yeah. for the semifinals of the PBA. Of course, when we talk about Hinebra versus Enlex, we're going to talk about um, the import matchup. When you have Brownlee, a guy who can really take over um, who can you know score in so many different ways for Hinebra? He's basically you know a bucket getter, difficult shots. And on the other hand, for Enlex, a different kind of import, a different kind of player compared to Brownlee. He uses his athleticism more, uh, more of an inside presence for Enlex. So a really interesting matchup here um, between these two imports. And you know with Cameron Clark, the way he's performing, you can feel that he's getting used to playing with mm -hmm. the Enlex Road Warriors because of course being a late replacement yeah. for KJ McDaniels. You're getting a different kind of import. You're not going to get the same guy like KJ McDaniels who could take over the game. Yeah. You have a system guy that can move the ball around and really be part of this NLEX team. And you can see his value, especially towards the end of that game. Crucial steal and the go-ahead bucket as well as a crucial free throw. 
Definitely. And I also wanted to ask, kahit si Pao muna yung okay. sumagot, there was a very strange ending mm -hmm. to Henebra. And yeah. uh, you okay. know, with regards to LA, I really <laughs> wanted to know because the fans, the audience are also curious as to what we have to say. Okay, so for those who don't remember exactly yep. what happened in the end, so LA Tenorio uh, gave a turnover that returned the ball to uh, Cameron Clark, an on-rushing Cameron Clark who got the go-ahead bucket and scored a free throw afterwards. Yeah. And then after Crucial that, play. Yeah. with seven seconds left, he got the ball back, sprinted the length of the floor, gave a uh, shot a lay-in. Unfortunately, they were down by three and not two. And the game ended there. And of course, it was a blunder. Sabi yeah. ni Eli Tenorio that na disorient siya sa turnover. Uh, Jegs, when you hear that type of explanation, sometimes you can get into your own head. How do you feel about that? Well, I can't say I know how it feels because I've never played wow. in a, in a, in a semi-finals <laughs> PBA ah, game. Okay, okay. Played, okay. I've played in a UAP semi-finals game, but the PBA is a different game, you know, in yeah. terms of talent. But we know what Coach Tim uh, wants to say to LA that, you know, he's going to give him a pass. He said that in an interview because yeah. LA Tenorio has done so many things for uh, Coach Tim Cohn, especially in the end game. And he knows that LA will bounce back. He's that type of a player uh, in order for them to make it to the finals. They just need one win. Yeah. yeah. Well, moving on from, uh, we talked about Cameron Clark a while ago, so let's move on now to the Meralco series against Magnolia. Of course, uh, we have to take a look here at the import matchup, i.e. And uh, when we talk about the import matchup, we have to talk about Tony Bishop and mm -hmm. Mike Harris. Tony Bishop filling in big shoes in Allen Durham and looks very close to replicating what he did in bringing Meralco to the finals. How important is this pairing in particular? Well, another... Interesting matchup right here between Tony Bishop and Mike Harris. Two very different players. Tony Bishop more of an outside threat. He loves to play around the perimeter and get his teammates involved. I mean, he had a great game in that uh, game three in order to get that 2-1 lead. But when you talk about Mike Harris, he's a tank. He can, yeah. he can score from the inside. No one can even guard him. You need to he send that help in order for him to have a hard time getting buckets for Magnolia. And he's friends with the Maralco fans. You saw, yeah. you saw yeah. him making those free throws in game two waving and hat, waving same, at yeah. them. So, you know, always an entertainer when it comes to Mike Harris. But yeah. we got to talk about some of the locals, Ayi. Yeah, and you know what? Adding to Maralco and Magnolia, we got to talk about the recovery of Paul. Yeah. yeah. You know, the fans are really hoping for it. And if you guys got some information on the specifics on what happened yeah. to our legend Polly. Game. So, Polly suffered a sprain in his ankle mm -hmm. in training and really hasn't looked right the entire series, Jegs. How crucial is it for him to at least get you know, a bit of the classic Paul Lee back into the series. Well, it's a little bit obvious that, you know, he's one step a little bit slower here in this series. In the past three games, he just scored, I think, 28 points in total on a, on a good day, on a healthy Paul Lee day. Mm -hmm. That's just his scoring for one game. He, yeah. he, we know that he can do that, but, you know, only time will tell. Um, they had um, Monday and Tuesday to really try to maybe recover from um, that injury. So let's see if Wednesday yeah. Paul Lee will uh, definitely try to, you know, keep Magnolia alive here against yeah. Miralco. Mm -hmm. And you know what, Jack? Let's talk about good news naman. Uh, we have Chris Banquero stepping up. Yeah. 23 points, double mm -hmm. figures. And talagang kasama siya sa mga sinasabi nilang heroes of that game. Well, I wasn't even surprised. You know, when you yeah. talk about Chris Banquero, he's a veteran point guard here in the PBA. He's had a lot of experience uh, in the playoffs. So, you know, nothing, nothing new there with Chris Banquero. Such an efficient guard and a very good defensive player as well. Yeah, you know, he's always there and he's always um, he's hassling and harrying as if he were you know he, he hassles and harry like a magnolia yeah. guard actually, yeah. Yeah. i wanted to say but again at 47 shooting for his 47 percent shooting from beyond the arc really was a big weapon and of course uh, we asked jago a while ago for his keys to victory dito para sa lahat mga competitors in the yeah. semifinals meralco magnolia and lex and hinebra uh, quick explanation for each i'm gonna read them out one at a time and let you explain for Meralco, sabi mo, close out mentality. Well, for Meralco, the momentum is on their side, so they want to make sure that they close out this one. They don't want to give back the momentum to Magnolia, so they got to do everything. Play great defense, execute on offense, basically just continue what they were they were doing in the past games. Ay, what do you say for Magnolia? And secondly, for Magnolia naman, hit outside shots. Ah. Well, yeah, because in the past three games, they've been struggling from the outside. Um, open looks they've been missing, so if they hit outside shots, it's going to be a different ball game for both teams. 
for the NX Road Warriors. Sabi mo, they need to put a speed limit on yeah. Barangay Ginebra. <laughs> Control the pace. Well, for NLEX, either slow the, the ball game or uh, try to get a lot of ins uh, transition buckets for them. Um, they can shoot volume threes and Coach Heng allows that. Let's see if they do the same thing for game four. At para naman sa Hinebra, Brownlee take over. Mm. Well, I want to see that. Uh, Brownlee <laughs> yeah. take over to bring Hinebra back to the finals here in the Governor's Cup. And I'm sure all the Hinebra fans are waiting to see that as well. Let's see if it happens in Game 4 tomorrow for both for both matchups. PBA Governor's Cup semifinals Game 4 happens tomorrow at the Smart Arneta Coliseum. You can catch that on PBA Russian on One Sports. Again, Jago Dario, thank you very much for joining us here today. And uh, let's see whether or not your key points do come through. Yeah, let's see. Thank you guys for having me okay so after the break it's time to get some stories from the court side of the premier volleyball league 2022 open conference quarterfinals stay tuned you're watching the game to the game. The Premier Volleyball League 2022 Open Conference continues to light up our world with exciting quarterfinals. And to talk a bit about some of the stories, joining us to share some of the stories from the court side is PBL Insider and my partner for tonight, Alexis Tinsai. Hey Alexis, how uh, are your fans kahapon? Grabe, wala akong marinig sa aking earpiece dahil grabe yung sigaw. 3,000 strong yung audience kahapon. Who, from what I know, were lining up since 5 a.m. 5 a.m., grabe. So, it, it parang concert yung peg, no? Tama. Pero, of course, so when you talk about all the teams that we've had here in Champion, the two-year-long wait to actually see their favorite players, uh, you it's a, a bit of what we expected. So, let's move on first to uh, a game that happened just a while ago, Choco Mucho and uh, PLDT, Choco Mucho advancing. Uh, for those who are wondering, so Choco Mucho will now play Creamline in the semifinals and PLDT falls into the classification uh, knockout game for rank 5 and 6. Now, when we talk about Choco Mucho and the, and the stories that, we ha that you've heard from them, what can you tell us here about this team that is going to go up against a big competition here in Creamline? Yes, you know what, Choco Mucho, ever since from last league, kita talaga natin that their ultimate goal is makabawi. Yeah. Makuha yung championship that they were supposed to have if not for some schedules, some um, problems yeah. with, with their, ano, natuloy-tuloy yung games nila. Kasi nandun na yung potential from last league. But then there, here they are, and talagang kita mo na solidified yung team nila. And they're just getting stronger than ever. Yeah. And kita natin na kumbaga yung end game nila is to win the championships. And you know what's surprising? We all know that ando na yung legendary Dina Wong. We have Kat Tolentino. We have BDL. But it's surprising to see even Isa Molde doing double figures. Agonsanya really surprising the crowd. And it's just something that the Ateneo fans and also the entire Rebisco fans, they're all rooting for it ever since last conference. And you know what? There's something exciting to talk about then Yung PLDT na nakalaban nila kanina. Yeah na umabot ng five sets. Yeah. I think PLDT is a very underrated team kasi kita mo kung gaano kalakas yung players nila. We have Chin Chin Basas, Del Palomata, Mika Reyes, you know, with that Mika magic coming back from, you know, the old glory days yes. of Mika in La Salle. Kaya, kita natin na talagang lumalaban sila compared to Choco Mucho, PLDT is just getting strong every game. Yeah. They're getting stronger yung gelling nila. They're a new team. Compared to Choco Mucho na yung core team, nandun na from last yeah. year. And you had to feel that siguro if PLDT had a longer season, it might have been a different story. But then, of course, uh, you know we don't have a lot of time to talk about this, but we're going to try and put together the two top seeds from the pool groups, and that is Signal and uh, Creamline. Siyempre, a lot of people are looking at these, hey, this is a potential finals matchup. Definitely. When you talk about these two teams, just what makes them such contenders here in this PBL. You know, when we were watching Signal sa court, napansin ng panel, napansin ng audience, the people that I was with, na bakit sobrang light ng Signal when it comes to the court? Walang ka-jitters-jitters. -jitters. When you see other teams, they have errors. Minsan kahit alam na nila yung gagawin nila, kinakabahan sila and yung iba, bumababa yung morale. Yeah. Every single time there's an error, there's a lapse. Pero with Signal, they are so unreadable na hindi makapag-strategize yung kabilang team because their setter, Jelka Yuna, is just 
just creatively yeah. setting it up, throwing it in the air, kung sino man yung wing na katabi niya. You, you, know, you bring up a good point there. Sorry, yeah. you mentioned Signal was unreadable, but then a lot of people are saying that Creamline, on the other hand, we all know what they're going to do. Pero what makes them different this time around that makes them so dangerous? Yeah, I was really asking Adelaide, their captain, and also Coach Sherwin, it's their third time, diba? Th three time winning champion, and their seventh time to enter the finals. Ano pa bang magiging bago sa cream line? Ano pa bang pwedeng mapanood na oh, oh. iba? And they said right now, they're just trying to be swifter, cleaner, crisper. And you can see it in every smash and every block. Na talagang hindi na siya umabot ng five sets, three sets, zero. Talagang sweep. End it earlier. Yan yung yes. mensahe sa cream line. And of course, uh, so much more stories happening on the floor and Alexis Tinsay is there a lot to get them for you. Alexis, thank you very much for sharing your stories and that will wrap us up for today. Yes, thank you for joining us. I'm Alexis Tinsay. I'm Paolo Del Rosario. This has been The Game.